The following presentation is brought to you by Discovery Education, leading the world of digital and video learning. Discovery Education, connect to a world of learning. Jimmy, I know the phone wasn't invented when you were born, but you know, about the time you were growing up, were you ever told to stay off the phone in a lightning storm? Yes, actually. We were told to stay off the phone, out of the shower, don't go under a tree, don't go out in the middle of a field with a large metal pole. Yeah, that would be bad. So well, all the ones that occur inside a house that we've heard from staying off the phone to staying out of the shower we're going to test on this myth. Should you be on the phone in a lightning storm? Here's the theory. Lightning strikes your house, or the phone or power cables leading to it, and it looks for the quickest way to the earth. Usually that's through a ground wire, but failing that, conductive wiring, or metal plumbing, is the fastest route. And if you happen to be hooked up to that... But can it actually happen? To find out, the Mythbusters need a house and lightning. The second part sounds tricky, but it turns out they're in luck. Pacific Gas and Electric has a facility specifically built to test the impact of lightning strike on electrical equipment. Jamie, I, like think, this is, I think you should live here, man. <laughs> They need so much electricity here, they use generators to make their own. So they don't black out all the houses for miles around. This would be called man's feeble attempt to generate lightning. We can't even become, come close to generate what Mother Nature can generate. How much can you generate? What we can generate here is up to 700,000 volts at about half a million watts. A real lightning bolt has more than 100 million volts, but 700,000 should do the trick. Hey. Now, before they get to fool about with lethal electricity, they need to build their stunt house. We need a dial telephone, two inch conduit, roofing shingles. Uh, what about telephone jack and telephone wires? The building resource center is where old houses come to rest in pieces. They aren't horsing around here. The stunt house has to be as close as possible to the real thing. Plumbing, wiring, and of course, the phone. And sooner than you can say, holy Heidemann's handyman, our dynamic duo is ready to start swinging hammers. Ah! There's even a shower, complete with its own tank and pump. Oh yeah. <laughs> That works. Yeah. But now, the all-important issue of wiring. The total goal of this experiment is to make this house entirely accurate to the exterior of a house. Stephen runs an eye over the entire setup and finds the wiring does meet California's building codes. You sure this is plugged in? I'm sure this is plugged in. Stephen, have you heard the myth or the tale that you should stay off the phone or stay out of the shower or not watch television or work on a computer during a lightning storm? I can see the telephone or electric devices because if there's a strike in the house and you get a big surge, that would not be good for anything that's connected with wire in the house, be that a computer. It's, I've certainly heard about you know, people's computers pretty much melting and frying down. I've heard about problems with telephones, but I've never actually seen the melted pieces and held them in my hand. Our little shotgun shack is all ready to go. We've got the computer set up, we've got two kinds of phones, we've got a television, we've got wall switches, plugs, junction boxes, everything to code, plus a shower that will be fully grounded, and we're ready to shoot lightning bolts at this thing. And so, Adam and Jamie will take their new home on the road. They've brought it to Pacific Gas and Electric's testing facility. So this is the arc, this is what the arc will actually come off sure. of. Why not? This facility can generate up to 700,000 volts, but by using half that, they'll get more amps. It's that flowing current that does the damage. 
And since everyone's feeling pretty good about being alive, Chip, the ballistics gel dummy, will be taking hits for the team. The gel has similar electrical resistance to human flesh, and Chip is grounded to the earth like a person standing up. This electrode will give us about 200,000 volts. Now that's enough to make it jump across the two feet here, through these wires, down either into the electrical box here or through the phone lines. Our test subject here, Chip, is set up with a phone strapped to his ear. We've also taped in some gunpowder in a little paper baggie here. And finally, we have our Mythbusters patented heart paddle current meter set up where we've got two copper paddles set up right where the heart would be. And if we read more than six milliamps of current across these lines, we know we've got a dead guy. I think what's going to happen when we zap the house is that we're going to see this nice long arc jumping from the, uh, the electrode into the house. We may see a few little things sizzling and burning. Uh, and if we're lucky, we'll find a pathway that could realistically happen that will um, you know, show up on the meters as potential death. We've done our best to duplicate in several different iterations what kind of wiring a lightning bolt is likely to encounter, but it's very unpredictable stuff, and even the guys here aren't exactly sure what will happen. The only thing the experts can be sure about in this test is they don't want to be standing anywhere near it when it happens. Barricade it off from a safe distance from the structure. The barricade position that people down here will have to stay behind during the test. Okay. Here's how this will work. Electricity can jump through air. Every 10,000 volts adds about one centimeter to the distance. Closing 200 over five. With the electrode in this position, when the charge reaches between two and 300,000 volts, it will zap across to the house. It's a waiting game as the charge builds. Their mad scientist fantasy is coming to life. Yeah! Wow! That was 300,000 volts straight into the house's wiring. It generates an electromagnetic pulse strong enough to throw our remote camera out of focus. No smoke and no sparks. No smoke, no sparks, no sparks from the phone. Incredibly, Chip's phone call is uninterrupted. Well, everything seems just like we left it. No problem, no reaction whatsoever. I don't think he got any current. The jolt exited straight out the ground wire standard to most homes. But remember, this shock is much smaller than real lightning. So Adam will help it by creating the worst possible scenario. What I'm going to do is there's no facility in the world can generate both the voltage and the amperage of an actual lightning bolt. Both together make this massive amount of electricity that will crawl across all sorts of wires. So I'm going to start cutting some grounds to the electrical wiring system and try and guide the electricity over to our person to see what would happen to the phone. There we go. So now minus the ground wire. Can that thin telephone cord carry a fatal charge? 100 kV. It's hot. It's going up in voltage. 150,000, 200,000, 200,000, 220, 230. That actually worked. That was beautiful. <laughs> the lightning arc from the mouthpiece into Chip's head, setting off Jamie's charge. The jolt finding its way with disturbing accuracy. That was awesome. I can't believe that worked so well. Are we clear? Uh, yeah, do you want us to put up fire? I'll just blow it out. <laughs> mm. Well, that worked like a charm. Did it fry the ear, too? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it did anything with the ear. No, it didn't do anything with the ear. So, a new phone, it arced through the mouthpiece and into the body. That's pretty serious. Yeah. Um, 
Wow. So that's it right there as far as I'm concerned. You know, this is a standard phone. It arced through the mouthpiece of the phone. That's, that's a lot of current to go through gel. So. Well, we can check and see what kind of current it is. Yeah. Remember, six milliamps across Chip's heart paddles would indicate a fatal shock. But there's a problem. The meter's blown. We had it set on the 40 milliamp setting, which is more than enough to kill you. Uh, if it fried the fuse of this meter, that was a lot more than 40 milliamps going through it, and uh, that's a dead guy. Works for me. So it seems it's myth confirmed. Even with a modern phone and modern wiring, you can be struck by lightning. As a second test, they'll try an older phone and an older style fuse box. Closing 200 over 2, going up. This time, Jamie's gunpowder didn't ignite, but Chips was definitely hit, and the meter blew again. We definitely still got continuity through the body and into the ground. Well, I'm satisfied. Phones will do it. Phones and lightning. Phones and lightning, bad, bad, bad. bad. <laughs> lightning fatality statistics bear that out. On average, about 75 Americans are killed by lightning each year, with 2% of those people talking on the phone at the time. The only good news for Chip's next of kin, powered up, the TV and computer still work fine. I think it's time to move on to see if showers and lightning are a similarly deadly combination. Let's do it. Okay. So, Chip's electrifying adventures continue, thrown out of the frying pan and into the shower. There we go. People have written into the site and specifically told us that they were always warned as children never to take a shower during a thunderstorm. We have grounded plumbing, which is running near electrical wire. Uh, we're hoping for a short between the electrical wire and the plumbing. And then our guy here, I've put a ground bar directly into him. This is basically equivalent to if you're standing in the shower and you're standing on the drain, which is also grounded. They're ready to go, ramp it up. 140 kV. Okay, proceed and close 200 over 2. Okay, we're up to 243, almost 250 kV. I hear it. Did you see that? Yes, I did. It's amazing. I'm not sure what I saw, but <laughs> I saw it. Only the Mythbusters could manage to start a fire in the shower. There you go. Here. So, Chips is saved from the fire, but was he already toast? The meter is inconclusive again. The electromagnetic pulse that messed with our camera could be frying it too. Even so, there seems little doubt you don't want to be in the shower during a storm. I don't care what the meter says. We're not even remotely approaching the actual strength of real lightning. And nobody can. And yet we're getting these massive arcs dancing across this guy's body. Arcs the size of boa constrictors yeah. that are kind of like wiggling right next to you. You kind of get the hint that there's going to be a problem there somewhere. Don't yeah, you? exactly. <laughs> I'm looking at phone confirmed, shower plausible. I'd say that's a safe bet. That amount of voltage and power can go anywhere. And so if you have a lightning storm, you want to minimize the possibility of exposure to the, the bolts. Stay away from things that can conduct lightning to you. Appliances can do it, water can do it, your plumbing can do it. Stay away from those things. I think we're done.